They were known as the Busby Babes, the most talented group of youngsters ever produced by Manchester United, all playing under the watchful eye of legendary manager Matt Busby. In 1956, they won the Division I league title. And then in 1957, they won it again. They were all but unstoppable. By February 1958, they were fourth in the table, but they'd lost just once in 13 games. Busby's babes were being tipped for yet another league title. On February 3rd, the team travelled to Yugoslavia for a European Cup quarter-final match against Red Star Belgrade. United had beaten them 2-1 at Old Trafford in the first leg, but Red Star were one of the top teams in Europe and it was expected to be a tough game. The match ended in a 3 all draw, but that was enough to send Busby's side through to the semi-finals for the second year running. Then, as the team made its way home, they were involved in a tragic accident. Their plane had landed in Munich to take on fuel before starting the final leg of the journey back to Manchester. It was snowing heavily, and the pilots had already aborted two takeoff attempts. It began to look like they'd have to delay their flight until the weather improved, but the captain was keen to keep to their schedule, so at four minutes past three, they made a third attempt. It was to prove a fatal mistake. Their plane hit a patch of slush and overshot the runway. It crashed into a fence and then a house and burst into flames. Early reports confirmed that many of the 44 passengers on board, which included journalists and supporters, had lost their lives. But only after emergency services had extinguished the flames and taken survivors to hospital did the extent of the tragedy become clear. marks the wreck of a British airliner. In attempting takeoff, it brushed some trees at the end of the runway, then dropped 60 feet into a house and a gasoline... The disaster in Munich made headlines all over the world. At home, the news was met with equal measures of shock and grief. The football world reeled. Manager Matt Busby had suffered fractured ribs, a punctured lung and leg injuries. He was so badly hurt that he was read his last rites, not once, but twice. A hospital statement soon after the crash said, we do not have much hope of saving him. Club talisman Duncan Edwards had fractures to his legs and ribs and severe kidney damage. Then there was Albert Scanlon, whose fractured skull and broken leg rendered him unconscious for three weeks. Johnny Berry and Jackie Blanchflower's horrific injuries ensured that they would never play football again. Bill Folkes, Kenny Morgans and Ray Wood had all suffered minor injuries. It was later revealed that goalkeeper Harry Gregg had actually pulled Bobby Charlton and Dennis Violet from the burning wreckage. Against the odds, Busby's condition steadily improved, but Edwards steadily worsened. On February 21st, 15 days after the crash, the 21-year-old rising star of English football died from his injuries. Eight United players and three of the club's backroom staff had lost their lives. Eight journalists and two other passengers were also killed. Of the 44 passengers on board, the final death toll was 23. Thousands lined streets up and down the country as funerals and memorial services were held for the dead. There was speculation Manchester United could fold, that the club was in danger of going out of business. But understanding manager Jimmy Murphy 
United saw out the remainder of the season with a team bolstered by loan signings and youth players. Their threadbare side won only one league game and finished ninth, but remarkably did manage to reach the final of the FA Cup. Meanwhile, two months after the disaster, Matt Busby was discharged from hospital. He travelled to the picturesque town of Interlaken in Switzerland to recuperate, but struggled to come to terms with what had happened. Depressed and heartbroken, Busby was determined he'd have nothing more to do with football. Until a few simple words from his wife, Jean, changed everything. You know, Matt, she said one day, the lads would have wanted you to carry on. It was enough to rekindle his enthusiasm for the game. Busby travelled back to England in time to see United line up against Bolton in the cup final. They lost 2-0, but the following season he returned to manage the club. Busby built his new side around Munich survivors like Bobby Charlton, Harry Gregg, Bill Folkes. The following season, they finished runners-up in the league, which was an astonishing feat. Charlton was the club's top scorer with 29 goals. United made some important signings too. Players like David Hurd and Dennis Law came in and strengthened Busby's new side. In 1963, they won the FA Cup, beating Leicester 3-1 in the final. Later that year, a precocious teenager called George Best made his debut at just 17. United were champions in 65 and again in 67. But Busby's crowning achievement came in 1968 when his Manchester United side, captained by Bobby Charlton, beat Benfica 4-1 after extra time at Wembley to finally lift the European Cup. Ten years after the tragedy that claimed the lives of eight of his players, United were champions of Europe. The Munich disaster left an indelible mark on Manchester United. The story of Munich and the Busby Babes has become part of club folklore. Every year since, on the anniversary, fans, players and managers past and present have gathered at Old Trafford under the Munich memorial plaque in the shadow of the Munich clock to pay their respects to those who died. Some leave flowers or poems. For others, just being there is enough. At the home game closest to the anniversary, there's a rendition of The Flowers of Manchester, a folk song written about the tragedy. Met destruction there, the flowers of English football, the flowers of Manchester. Matt Busby's boys were Others travel to Munich, where a memorial stone sits on a small patch of ground at the junction of two quiet streets. A sign above it reads Manchester Platz, the exact spot where 60 years ago, in the snow and ice, 23 lives were lost and many more were changed forever. Eight men will never play again who met destruction there. The flowers of English football, the flowers of Manchester. Matt Busby's boys were flying, returning from Belgrade. This great united family, all masters of their trade. The pilot of the aircraft, the skipper, Captain Thane. Three times they tried to take off and twice turned back.